in the second learning outcome, we'll look at the differences in between the glucogenic and the ketogenic amino acids. So, what will happen when we have too much protein supply? Are we in a positive or in a negative nitrogen balance? Yes, the answer is positive balance. So initially, our body will try to store the excess in the forms of glycogen and fat molecules, but eventually, this excessive nitrogen source must be catabolized and excreted out of the body. Again, when we have too many amino acids, which is well above the biosynthetic requirements, they will be catabolized. And the main organ to do so is our liver. But for leucine, isoleucine, and valine, you do have exceptions because they can be catabolized by most other tissues such as the adipose and muscle. Well, you have learned that we can use the amino acid for energy production, but we cannot use the whole molecule for energy production because the amino group will not be metabolized in the energy production pathway. So what do we do? We catabolize amino acid into two parts, which are the carbon skeleton in the form of alpha keto acid and the amino group in the form of ammonia molecule. As what you have seen, the first step in amino acid breakdown is to remove the amino group so that we can leave behind a carbon skeleton that can go into the energy production pathway. And to do that, we will need two enzymes to catalyze these two processes, which are transamination and oxidative deamination. And now let's look at a bit more details. To remove the amino group from the amino acid, we'll transfer it onto an alpha ketoglutarate molecule. By doing that, we end up with an alpha keto acid, which is a carbon skeleton and an amino acid which is glutamate or glutamic acid. So this process is known as transamination because it involves the transfer of the amino group in between different molecules and is catalyzed by the enzyme aminotransferase. But how do we remove the amino group that is transferred to glutamate? Well, we will need a second reaction which is the oxidative deamination that happens in the liver and our kidney. So what happens here is that the amino group from glutamic acid will be released in the form of ammonium ion or ammonia, forming again another alpha ketoglutarate. And this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. So we begin with an alpha ketoglutarate in transamination and now we also end with another alpha ketoglutarate in oxidative deamination and basically it forms a cycle but how does the cycle look like okay imagine if this is the amino acid that we would like to catabolize so what do we do first we have to remove the amino group in the first reaction known as transamination so in transamination we have the transfer of the amino group onto an alpha ketoglutarate and by doing that, we are left with the carbon skeleton of the amino acid, which is the alpha keto acid. Well, by receiving the amino group, the alpha ketoglutarate will become an amino acid, which is the glutamic acid. But the question here is that, how do we really dispose this amino group from our body? Well, we'll need the second step, which is the oxidative deamination catalyzed by the enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. So what this enzyme does is to remove the amino group in the form of ammonia, which is a highly toxic compound. So it will be processed in the liver to be converted into urea for safe disposal. So basically, this is a cycle. So as long as both reactions are running, you will be getting the recycling of alpha ketoglutarate and glutamic acid. So what can we do with the alpha keto acid? Well, it depends on whether the alpha keto acid is glucogenic or ketogenic. For glucogenic amino acids, their carbon skeletons are converted into pyruvate or other intermediates in the TCA cycle, which can then be used in 
gluconeogenesis or the production of new glucose molecules. As for the ketogenic amino acids, their carbon skeletons can be converted into the precursors of acetoacetate, acetyl coenzyme A, or acetoacetyl coenzyme A. So, what is acetoacetate? It is a type of ketone bodies. So, you will learn about this in ketoacidosis, which is especially prominent with type 1 diabetic patients. And you should know about acetyl coenzyme A, it is a universal substrate in TCA cycle and it is also used in the synthesis of fatty acids. How about acetoacetyl coenzyme A? Well, it is required in the synthesis of cholesterol. So some amino acids could be both glucogenic and ketogenic. And if you look at their metabolic pathways, both types of amino acids converge, forming seven intermediate products. So all these intermediary products could then enter the central metabolism which is again your TCA cycle. These are the seven breakdown products of amino acids. From alanine, cysteine, glycine and so on, you can get pyruvate, which can then be used in gluconeogenesis for the production of new glucose molecules. And then from isoleucine, you can get acetyl coenzyme A. From these amino acids, you can get acetoacetate, which is a ketone body. From arginine, histidine and proline, you will get alpha ketoglutarate, which can then be used in transamination. And from these amino acids, you will get succinyl coenzyme A. From phenylalanine and tyrosine, you will get fumarate. And from asparagine and aspartic acid, you will get oxaloacetate. So if you were to organize all the amino acids into a table, you will see that there are more glucogenic amino acids than the ketogenic one. Well, some will be both glucogenic and ketogenic, such as tyrosine. So from the previous diagram, you can see that tyrosine can be used to make acetoacetate, which is a ketone body, and therefore it is ketogenic. While at the same time, the same tyrosine can be used to make fumarate, and fumarate can be used to make new glucose molecule, and therefore it is glucogenic. And for that reason, Tyrosine is both ketogenic and glucogenic. So, do you have to remember all these things? Well, no, you just have to know that there are more glucogenic amino acids than the ketogenic ones, and some will be both glucogenic and ketogenic. 